Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads to sunny South Florida, but ends up in a gloomy situation. Has the business ever worked in nine years? No. At a restaurant called La Bistro. Don't you dare go to the wrong table. In spite of the business failing miserably. I don't get it. You don't have to get it. This chef owner still operates like a stubborn dictator. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Who doesn't listen to anybody. I'll do what the fuck I like. Not his employees. Alex, this is your fault. You sort it out. Not his wife. Where are you going? Get back here. You fucked up enough tonight. And not even his customers. He wants me to rail. Time to fuck himself. Yeah. Tonight. Gordon is in for the match of the year. It's like a competition between you and I. You don't intimidate me. But he is not backing down. Treat your wife like a fucking dog. Don't you fucking go there. I'm gonna do it. Get ready for a head-to-head -head confrontation. Why can't you just cook it? As Chef Ramsay attempts to get through to a man so arrogant. I don't know if you're hard of hearing. And so resistant to change. There's one person cooking. That's me. That his restaurant may be impossible to rescue. You are blatantly ignorant. That's tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Lighthouse Point, an exclusive community, six miles outside of Boca Raton, Florida, lined with large mansions, pristine beaches, and home to La Bistro. After studying at top Michelin star restaurants throughout Europe, Andy Truesdale met and married the love of his life, Ellen. Come on, give me a kiss. See ya. See you later. Andy and I met in St. Thomas at the restaurant that he was executive chef, and I fell in love with his food. It was love at first bite. I've worked in a chef in many different areas in big hotels, small hotels, little restaurants, and I can run rings around anyone, anyone. Tired of working for other people, they moved to South Florida in 2001 to fulfill Andy's dream of opening up a restaurant of his own. Good evening, the Bistro Restaurant. Can I help you? Hello. Ellen and myself decided to buy a restaurant because she obviously tried my food. She realized how dedicated I was. And I'm very on the ball with everything. Hey, what's that shit over there? Get off the shelf. Get that off there. Andy is not only a chef, he's a creator. Don't forget my apples. You need apples cut, three nice rings. I would really say he's a master at what he does. And if I didn't think my husband was a brilliant chef, I would not be in this business with him. Ellen. I'm right here. Table 14 is ready for the entree. I'm going to run this now. There seems to be a lot of wealth in the area, but for some reason, the people that live in Lighthouse Point do not seem to appreciate Andy's food. Andy, they didn't want it. They don't want anything else. It's too dry. The problem is he thinks he's perfect, so he really don't like it when people send back the food. Steak is grizzly. Get the fuck out of here. That's beautiful beef tenderloin. They're a local customer. Well, I don't give a shit. Alex, this is your fault. You sort it out. My food's perfect. I've worked long and hard and paid for the right to have what I want. Be quiet. Whether people come and like it, love it, or hate it, it's my business, it's my reputation, it's my food. I'm the chef, and I'm the owner, and that's what I want. I really wish I knew what the major problem with Le Bistro was. I can't say it's the food. Of course, I can't say it's me. I don't believe it's my staff. I just don't know what the problem is. Be happy. Don't be, ugh. It's a bistro. It's fun. It's upbeat. Right now, I can't keep up with the debt. And I don't know where we're going to get the money to pay the debt off. It's going from bad to worse. For the work and the effort and everything we're doing, everything we've put into this, would definitely not benefit anything. If this restaurant closes, the last thing I want to do is go and work for some idiot somewhere else. I hate idiots.
South Florida, known for many great things, great beaches, water sports, and a place where people like to dine out. Le Bistro is chef-owned, and he's on his ass. Now, today, he's close for lunch, because he's holding a cooking class. I'm about to pay him a surprise visit. Here we go. Uh, the menu is a goat cheese that we have on the menu, and we put a little bit of bee pollen on. You arrange it so it looks like a flower. Oh, hi. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, good afternoon. Hello. Nice to see you. Please don't let me stop you. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, no problem. Nice to meet you. Yeah, very, very happy. What's the matter? Uh, just right in the middle of so I'm oh, fine. Oh, right, OK. The first impression I had when Gordon Ramsay walked in the door was, what the fuck is he doing here? So what's for entree, chef? I just thought we'd do like a little, a little minute steak with a little sirloin. Nice. Hello. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice. And you're the server? Uh, she's my wife. Oh, she's your wife? Oh, how nice. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky lady. So maybe like a large dice. Bring them to the boil, let them simmer for about 15 mm. minutes. And I'm going to put a little bit of butter in there. Should it be smoking? So that's OK. We obviously just play a little smoke. Um, I felt that Gordon Ra Ramsay was just being an actor. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So how do you think that went? Happy with it? Uh, not really. What's the matter? Those cooking classes go very, very well for us. I don't want you to fuck it up to try and make a mockery of what I'm doing in front of these people. Jesus. Are you always like this, or...? Always like what? So defensive. You ask me a question, I'm answering you. OK, so let's line up a little bit. Come over, Johnny, please. So where did you start cooking, Andy? I'd worked for uh, Michel Roux in London. You worked for Michel Roux at the Waterside Inn? Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to me. So we had a very similar sort of training. Honestly, from a chef's point of view, you've, you've got your stripes. So in your mind, the one single reason to why the restaurant's not working, Ellen, would be what? For some reason, people don't find it appealing to come in here. And I mean the locals, we, our bread and butter clientele, don't seem to enjoy the restaurant. They're not biting. People really and truly are pretty demanding. I think we're fed up with it. Has the business ever worked in nine years? No. Never? It's no. gone up and down. It's never been great. It Andy. Ellen said, your dear wife said very quickly, no. If it's never worked, don't be embarrassed. I'm not. Well, I'm just saying that she's wrong. Right, I'd like, I'd like to eat. Seen the cooking class? Fantastic resume, and I'd love to taste your food. Anything? Yeah, show off. Show me what you're made of. I'll just take it off the menu. Yeah? I don't know what Chef Ramsay's going to say, because Andy's food is very good and he somehow manages to stay ahead of the trends all the time with his menus and his recipes. Just as we always do, that's not changing nothing. We don't have two or three people cooking on the stove, it's me on the stove. Listen, you're gonna hand me that shit out of that fridge where no dicking around. If I say I want it this way, I want it that way because I say I've earned it, I'm paying for it. Okay, just a minute for the lamb and we're gonna have everything else going right out. Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to Alex. see you. Alex, Gordon. Alex, do your job, let's go. OK. Oh, here's the riette. Mmm, bon appétit. Thank you. You're welcome. Jesus. I mean, I just chipped my tooth. You didn't look like that cartilage. Christ. Show him the bone as well. Jesus. I I just bust my tooth. Hey, man, he found the bones on the dirt. Listen, go away. Go away. He doesn't listen to nobody. That's it. That's the way he is. You cannot change the Andy. Alex. Oh, Jesus. Coconut curry, jalapeno. My God. Garlic, coconut, lamb inside the. It, it is. Okay. Uh huh. Did you show Chef the cartilage? Yeah, I did. He uh, told me to like go, go away. I really didn't want to talk about it. That's the truth. <laughs> So rubbery, huh? The texture of the lamb is oh. very rubbery. Mm. Mediterranean crispy fried lamb curry roll. I'm in Florida, not in Mumbai. You hate it. Whatever. This is bullshit. This is just to fuck us up. No, that's not why. Whatever. I'd stop right there if I were you and go away. 
Gordon Ramsay trashed everything I did. And I think that's his whole goal, is to tramp all over you, make you feel bad. OK. Uh, right, that was interesting. So that was you at your best? That wasn't my best that I've ever done in my career. You mean for the best here, or do you mean, is that the best food that we have? Yeah, yes or no? I mean, I, you know, was that I asked you to cook for me and okay. just, yeah, just tell me how that was for you. Uh, that was good for this restaurant, it's good for here. Here's the problem. The food's old-fashioned and totally, totally out of text in terms of where you are. That's your opinion. The food is sad. Stuck in the 80s. Possibly the most shocking dish anywhere in Florida, the crispy lamb roll. What in the hell was going on when we put that one together? Shredded coconut, horrible rubbery texture, almost on the verge of being depressing. Any more you want to put me down for? The briette. I don't know if anyone will give you feedback, but it was on the verge of breaking my tooth. All right, I'm supposed to believe that. You're not looking at me now as if I'm exaggerating. It was full of cartilage. I'm listening to what you're saying. Nobody, I didn't know. No one told me. No one told you. Hey, man, he found the bones on his gut. It doesn't go away. Two seconds, sir. Yeah. Do you not tell the chef that the first mouthful was full of cartilage? Yeah, I did. I mean, I told him. He it's told me to go away. When your waiter comes to tell you valuable information, you should know those kind of things, right? Can I just have two minutes with Andy on my own? Would you mind, Ellen? Would you mind? Honestly, yeah, straight up. I'm here to help. So far, all you're doing is just slam me down. That's all you've done with me. I think it's about you. Don't blame me. I know you are, yeah. He's not my chef. He's not. We don't work for him. You're the chef owner. Right. So why won't you take responsibility? I'm the chef. You don't like it? That's fine. It's your opinion. You don't like it. We're fucked. We're no good. I'm lousy. Whatever. Fuck me. Do you have issues? Coming up, Andy is ready to make a confession. I'm a loser, everybody. But that doesn't mean he is ready to change. Go back and tell her, choose something else. Madness. As he continues to battle with the patrons... Don't go fuck himself. The wait staff... Get back here. You've fucked up enough tonight. And Chef Ramsay. Don't you fucking go there. You don't point that fucking I'll thing I'll be on the fuck I like. That's next on Kitchen Nightmares. In the short time that Chef Ramsay has been at La Bistro, he is already feeling very uncomfortable with the arrogant owner that cooked the food. You don't like it, we're fucked, we're no good, I'm lousy, whatever. Now it's time to see how this tiny South Florida restaurant handles its customers in a dinner service. You gotta take the order and come to you, okay? I'm the only one who takes the order. It's a joke. The waiters are actually working. One. Uh, is that uh, a is that? The way they do it. I would love to be able to just take the orders, but Andy only wants one person writing the checks. Thank God he brought the bread. Seriously. Is Alex the only one that takes orders in there? Yes, one person takes the orders and it slows down things for Andy. I've just noticed two tables that are waiting to get their orders taken. Okay, I'll go out and see what's happening. Hi, how are you? Awesome. Yay. Do you know what you like? Yes. Okay, who would like to start? Oh my god. So what you do? Usually pull out everything when he calls an order on, so he can get it on the fire. So do you actually cook as well or not? I can, but Andy does not let me cook. This is definitely a little kingdom here, isn't it? A little one-man band. Hey, 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 we don't have time for talking. I don't care if it's him or the queen. Jesus. Keep going over that refrigerator. You look on there and go over everything. Wow. Whose is this writing? That's, That's me. Your... Why? Because... Why are you doing that? You're going against everything we said and everything we did. I'm sorry. Where are you going? Get back here. You fucked up enough tonight. People are really dumb sometimes, and they think with their ass rather than their brain. It's an hour into dinner service. And this part chef, part dictator, has now allowed a few entrees to leave his kitchen. Andy, am I ready to take this? I'm yeah. waiting for you, yeah. The fries are there. I don't know what you want me to that do. That goes on the plate. Okay. Madness. For you, gentlemen. Hi, thank you for your patience. It's, it's an edible. Yeah. It's like a medium well done. It's really too red for me. I like it well, but not short. I got so you. I know. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Andy, she wants it well, but not short. 
Yeah, that's a medium well, that's medium well. She wants it more. I don't care, we're not doing it again, no. So go back and tell her, choose something else. Oh, jeez. Houston, we have a situation. I'm very sorry, but the chef would like you to make a different choice. <sighs> This is unbelievable, because there's a lot of similarities between Andy and I. We're both English, and we both studied in Paris, but there's one thing we don't share in common. I care about my customers. He clearly doesn't give a shit. What a shame. Hey, Andy, I say he's terrible. Well, what's terrible about it? He wants to be the rare. Tell him go fuck himself. Yeah. Why are you looking for excuses, and Every fucking table that's come back, all you want to do is argue with them. Look at the potatoes, they're black. So fucking sad. Well, all you've done is slammies the second you've been here, and that's what you do, right? Why are you acting Sorry, like this? I don't get it. You don't have to get it. Andy, seriously, yeah, sure. you don't give a fuck, big boy. You're looking for a justification every time you fuck up. A man that can't even accept his own mistakes. Or get your staff to wipe your ass and say it's brilliant, chef. You're amazing. Treat your wife like a fucking dog. Don't what? bring my wife into it. That's I'm gonna do it. Do you know no, why? Don't bring my fucking it. wife right. into it. Don't you fucking go there. Right. Don't point that fucking I'll thing at me. I'll be on the fuck I like. Well, just calm down. Oh, I just ask politely. Like. Don't talk to her like that. Because you haven't got the respect for her. How can you get yeah, people dude. working for you? Yeah, whatever. This is bullshit. Oh, After getting nowhere with Andy in the kitchen... Good, just before you leave, would you be so kind just to fill out these customer comment cards? Sure. Would you... Gordon steps outside not only to cool off, but to get some feedback from the clientele. Let's go. Something Andy has never done. I asked your customers leaving the restaurant this evening to rate the service out of 10, to rate the food, to rate the experience. So, on average, 4 out of 10 for the service. On that note, why do you take all the tables order? That's what they want. Who? Oh, me. So what's the rationale behind it, the logic? It helps the space a little bit, buys a few minutes. There's three of you in the kitchen. Like I said, I don't know if you're hard of hearing, but there's one person cooking. That's me. Food, they rated three out of 10. But the most important question was, would they come back? And about 78% of them said no. And the weird thing about the whole service tonight, every time something comes back, as far as you're concerned, your customers are wrong. No, that's your evaluation. That's what I watched. Don't make you right and me wrong about every single thing. <laughs> oh, my God. Why would you have to be a fucking asshole? Because you had, like, such a dick every time you fucking thing. It's like a... A competition between you and I. You don't intimidate me. What? You kind of bully me. That's all you're trying to fucking do. You're so wrapped up in a deluded little bubble, and not one person has got the balls to tell you the truth is not working. You are blatantly ignorant. Whatever. Fuck you. Come on. Well, you're one sided. That's all you want to fucking do, man. Excuse me. Oh, no. It was a miserable evening in which Chef Ramsay tried continually to get through to Andy. That's your evaluation. Oh, my God. But this stubborn chef flat out refuses to listen. You just don't want to get better, do you? <laughs> what? You've never, ever, ever understood the value of your customers, let alone your staff. Because you don't give a shit about them. I'm a loser, everybody. Oh I'm the worst. God. Anything else? I got any more? Guys, can you give me two minutes on my own, please? Guys, can you just back off, please? Would you mind? Yeah? Everybody. Everybody. Out. Andy, man. He's an asshole. We can never tell him that because he won't listen. He won't listen to nobody. Do you want your restaurant to work, yes or no? Obviously, yes. OK, good. But stop there. That's the most honest you've been all day. I told you that earlier. You don't need to be so defensive with me. Tonight was about observing and watching the fucking setup. You have created a monster here. What are you suggesting? Are you committed to making this place change? That's all I need to know before I'm out of here. 
That that is it. Yeah, you can change everything. Anything. No, no. I need to hear it from uh, you, 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 Andy. You. Thank you. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Get some sleep. Fuck me. Fuck it now. Gentlemen, good night. Right. One stubborn fucker, huh? Andy's statement that he is open to change has kept Chef Ramsay around for at least another day. But Gordon is fully aware that he is at the beginning of a huge uphill battle. Take a seat. Sit down and relax. How cool is this? Terrific. Right, I want you to come out and clear the air. Because of the stigma and your training and the proudness, that's defense mechanism. But before we start changing, you have to understand that we have to identify the problems with the restaurant. You've got to understand where you've gone wrong. I want you to come downstairs, and I've got a little surprise for you. Sandwich would be nice. Sandwich. <laughs> Fuck you now. Stop thinking about your tummy. Now, come down. Because in this door, OK, I've arranged for you to meet, yeah, some very special people. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we? Good to see you. In this room, are your previous customers. And they've got some very important information to tell you about the experience the last time they ate at the bistro. Madam, tell me the experience. What was it like? It just, in general, did not live up to our expectations and was not at all what we expected for a bistro. What was the biggest disappointment across the whole experience? The food. The food. Andy, anything to say? Nothing to say. Nothing? Anyone else? We were there a year or so ago. None of us can remember the experience. We didn't even know the restaurant was still in business until we saw I don't it. really want to comment mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to get into it. Isn't this valuable information? When did you eat at the bistro? When was the last time? Um, I've eaten there twice. The last time was probably about a year ago. And describe the experience. You know, you walk through the door. It's kind of dark, gloomy. There's no one in there at all. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you sit down and eat. And, you know, it's like you have everyone staring at you when you're sitting there eating. You know, it's, it's very uncomfortable. Honestly, deep down, are you looking for naked women dancing on the table? Whoa. What are you looking for? Hey, hey relax. Oh, I'm relax. Asking, what are you looking for? Looking relax, for relax, relax. Night. They don't want to see naked dancers on the table. Come on, Andy. These are customers. He didn't want to hear about it. It was a wall that Andy had around him. But he needs to listen to what the people are saying. Why would you take it so personally? This is really not nice for us, so like, i got to suck it up right now. It's not personal. Yeah. Thank you. So getting you guys here today was valuable for me to understand where we're going wrong. I'm sure uh, Andy and Ellen will take the information in the right text, uh, but thank you. In spite of Andy again refusing to take advantage of any feedback, Chef Ramsay pushes on to another problem in the restaurant, Andy's inability to delegate anything to his sous chef. To make his life easier, yeah, I'll do the dish with you. Then tonight, as we're in service, Henry can cook the dish. So is he going to do that dish? He's going to purely cook one snapper, just to make your life easier. Whatever. My, are you all right, by the way? You don't look very happy. You seem like you've got into a, a little bubble again. No, I don't know. No. No. OK, great. Have you cooked snapper before? Yes. You have, yeah? Good. Getting on the stove, be nice tonight, cooking, you know, a snapper dish. Helps speed up just to get food out. If you square it up, the fish cooks evenly. Yes. Yeah, and nothing's overcooked on the outside. Fish in, always lay away from you. Yeah, skin yes. side down, fingers on the top. I wish we had a stove in, I could keep him there. My concern was is that I was going to cook the fish properly and get it out in time. Take your fish. Beautifully glazed, and set that on top of your vinaigrette. Would you like a little taste first? Yeah. Yeah? Ellen, please. Local core snapper, and more importantly, right now, pretty good for the bottom line, in terms of profit-wise. That's really good. I love the dish. It was delicious. Hopefully, we'll sell most of the specials tonight, and Hendrick will be taking some of the pressure off of Andy. Andy, I know you're busy. Come and have a little taste. Yeah? Very good. How you going? Very nice. Happy with that on your menu? That's fine. Yeah. Coming up. That ticket's like a hot potato in your hand. Get it out! The battle between Andy and Gordon escalates to a full-out war. If they want it more cooked, why can't you just cook it? And when the bistro hits its breaking point... It wasn't given to me on a fucking plate. So don't throw it away! 
Chef Ramsay gets devious. Something I need to show you very, very quickly. You won't believe what he does in order to get through to Andy. I'm so sorry, but now you've overstepped the mark. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. In spite of his frustration and disappointment with Andy, Chef Ramsay has taken a number of steps to make sure tonight's dinner service will be smoother. We'll do 10 portions of this stuff tonight, okay? Gordon has created a new, tasty, profitable snapper special. Lay away from you so you don't splash. He has insisted that sous chef Hendrick will cook. Hi, welcome to La Bistro. And lastly, he has made sure that both waiters Everybody. will be taking orders. Which are your tables? I got this side. With different waiters taking the order at the same time. It's easy to accommodate customers. The whole place should run as a team. We have some great specials tonight. Our local cot, red snapper. I'd like to have a snapper. You just had a little taste, I finished the thing off. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Now that both waiters are taking orders, one of Chef Ramsay's goals has been realized. Order in. Orders are getting into the kitchen much quicker. Four bistros a middle, one mahi, and three snapper. Order in. One capacho, one escargo in order. Guys, heard? Heard. The only question is, can Andy handle it? And order in. Tell me when to fire those snappers, Andy. Not yet, because the duck's going to be a few minutes. What table's next? I'm trying to do this one, yeah. I need to fire that snapper or no? Hang on, I don't want you to fire around me being ready. 30 minutes into service, and the kitchen is already behind. Hendrick is waiting on the sideline for Andy to tell him what to do. And Andy is still cooking one dish at a time. Andy, what's going on with six? I'm still missing the money on the last table that came on order. That ticket's like a hot potato in your hand. Get it out! Waiting on that. It's not making sense, Ellie. It's not making sense. I'll get it. I know he will. I still think Andy needs to get up to par. He can't do everything himself. Andy needs more support back there. I need all the entrees now. Alan, don't make matters worse. It's bad enough having him on my ass. I'm just saying, Six has been there forever. This is a joke. That's one hour, 10 minutes now, not one entree served. He has a restaurant next door to him. I'm about to prove a very important point. How are you? Good evening. Busy night here tonight, yeah? Yeah. Would you mind if I order to go? No, sir, no, no, no. I will go for the seared tuna. OK. And how long? About 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Can you believe that? Well, that's 10 minutes. This restaurant, on average, 75 to 80 minutes for an entree. Let's go. Ready? Yes, it is. Excellent. Does food always come out that quick? Yes. Thank you. Incredible. Well, that is absolutely delicious. There's somebody else that really needs to know about this now. Still no entrees. I just need 30 seconds. Oh, God. Something I need to show you very, very quickly. Out of the frustration in terms of why food's taking so long, I decided to do a little experiment. I ran in there, ordered an entree, tuna. It came out. 10 minutes. They are full. I'm just trying to show you what's happening on your doorstep. <gasps> We're going to have to have a serious talk. By the way, it was delicious. Over an hour ago? Please. Hungry. Let me know when I need to send those snappers. You ready? Uh, can you just give me a second just so I can get these out? Yeah. Send the snapper so you can focus and get quicker out of the box. Go, go, go. After Chef Ramsay's constant prodding, Hendrick begins to cook. I'm firing one snapper. Go for it. Tonight, you reclaim your position as a sous chef. Do a good job, he'll trust you more. Snapper. The snappers at the window. And now that Hendrick is focused on cooking his specials, at least some entrees are leaving the kitchen. Snapper for you? Thank oh, there we you. go. Look at that. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, the snapper is really good. There you go. Chef Ramsay's snapper cooked by Hendrick is getting positive reviews. You cook my fish like this, I'm staying home. But the original menu is getting panned. On the cook. They nailed the snapper. The snapper came out perfect.
Always undercooked, man. Jim, did you give me the plate? It was pink. He never cooks the way they want. Fuck's sake. I'm really sorry. I cannot believe that you're happy to serve that. If they're wanting more cooked, why can't you just cook it? I don't need to tell you, big boy. This is your restaurant. I'm so sorry. But now you've overstepped the mark. Now I would serve that my dog. After another dinner service filled with customer complaints, Chef Ramsay tries once again to get through to Andy. Tonight, honestly, I was disappointed. Because you proved, yet again, that you don't give a shit about your customers. You're in the service industry, customer relations. Do you want to hear anything I have to say about it, to, to answer, or...? Oh, please. There's no point. You're just badgering me. You don't want to hear anything I say. Talk to me, chef. My name's Andy. <sighs> Isn't one of the problems that the customers here are different than your experience of customers in Europe? But that is that is part of the truth. People don't hear or understand any form of food or service, really and truly. But you can't afford to be a snob. I'm not a snob. You just told me you know they don't know what they're talking about. You just said it yourself. You've got to come down, Peg. I know chefs that would give their right arm to have their wife at the front, the chef at the helm, and a neighborhood, family-run business. It's a dream come true for any chef. I wasn't fucking given it. I earned it. Good. It wasn't given to me on a fucking plate. So don't throw it away. You're about to blow it completely. We're at that point. We're at that point. You, you've brought it to light. You've came and you've told us and you've showed us and you've brought it to light. You can win if you want to. Andy, wipe the slate clean and start again. That's the best thing to do. Tomorrow, together, all three of us are going to relaunch this restaurant. Tomorrow is the beginning of a new chapter. Wipe the slate clean. Good night. With Andy's first real commitment to change, Chef Ramsay brings in his renovation team to work through the night to transform Le Bistro. Right, good morning. Good morning, how, how are you? Doing? Yeah. Well, I think, how are you? Very yeah? well, thank good. you. How are you? Great. Yeah, good. You look great. Now, Andy, last night, you told me you were committed to changing this restaurant, yes? Yes. Good, because today's about change, yes? This is your new restaurant. Have a look at your new sign. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's fabulous. Modern, legible. Does it look nice? I love it. It's well overdue. I love the sign. It seems like easy on the eye. Ready to go inside and have a look? Oh, yes. Let's go. Come in. Mm. Oh, beautiful. Wow. This is great. Gone are the booths. Oh, thank God. In comes this wonderful leather upholstered wall. Comfy bonquette seating. Take a seat. <sighs> I like this. Happy? Happy. Very good. Extremely happy. It's great. I, I was stuck for words, really, because it's, it's a big change for us. I mean, I've been here almost nine years. To see something in just a few minutes is like a shock. Wow. Oh, my goodness. It's great. It was great to see Andy as happy as he is. And I'm so relieved. I'm really looking forward to see him in the kitchen. I think he's truly capable of change. This is the beginning of a new chapter. It's what we needed, that's for sure. This is what you needed. And if this doesn't rekindle that spirit and that level of passion, I don't know what will. Chef Ramsay spent most of relaunch day cooking side by side with Andy. Got your pan? Yep. Nice and hot. What else you got left to do for service? I'm just finishing the uh, polenta. Gordon is hoping these new menu dishes will be just what the local community wants. Uh, right, how does the food look? Looks great. Doesn't it? 
Lovely. The gazpacho. Perfect for a hot summer's evening. Oysters. Local oysters. Extraordinary. Steamed mussels. I would order that. Perfect. Have a taste. Entrees. Local snapper. Big hit last night. It's remaining on the menu. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Veal and foie gras burger. Mm. So good. It's quite straightforward. And for me, the secret tonight is the speed. I was a little apprehensive because someone else's menu. But time for change, and change is better. Of course, we're happy. That is so good. Now, everybody, this is crucial. Tonight, each one of your tables will play host to a phenomenal VIP. That is going to spread the word beyond belief. Over there, the chief of police. Over there, that gentleman is the city commissioner. Over here, we have the host of the top radio morning show. And is also the local renowned food critic from the newspaper. This is fabulous. Thank you. Pretty excited to be cooking for the VIPs. Obviously, they have a big pull, so I'm um, looking forward to hopefully keeping them happy. Uh, I want to know why they haven't been here before. With a completely new game plan in place. So when it comes on, you put on there and you just take it, right? Absolutely beautiful. The Bistro is ready to open its doors, and there will be a local VIP at virtually every table in the restaurant. Oh, I'm so anxious. I'm glad you're here. You are? Thank you. We have a great new summer menu. The snapper, beautiful, comes with a little arugula. Madame? I'll try the snapper, please. I'm going to have the risotto on your recommendation, but I'm going to try your snapper. I think that sounds really interesting. Is Chef Alan happy? Yeah, yeah. He is. Who is he? He's I like know. one of the top chefs from South Florida. Is he really? He's very, very famous. The Bistro's success tonight rests on Andy's ability to cook. You and him have got to connect now, yeah? And his ability to delegate. You give it on this ring? Here we go. You ready? Yep. Order in. Two legs, a risotto, a pork, a snap, and a burger. Here we go, guys. Come on. Yes, Hendrik. Make sure they're nice. You're going to need fries for a burger. Need that right away. Come on, come on, give me go, give me go. Check out. The burger is for you. Look at that. Andy got off to a good start, and customers are enjoying the new menu. Very good. Order in. But back in the kitchen, things are starting to heat up. Yeah, let me know when I can fire that second snapper. And Andy is slipping back to his old ways. What do we need? Chicken risotto, lamb, burger. Andy. Yeah? You've just gone silent. Last 15 minutes, not saying a word. But we're going as fast as we can. Andy, don't go back to the old ways. All right. That's all. You are doing table 13. No, 14 and 5 has been called. Cool. That's what we're doing. Don't you dare go to the wrong table. Come on, hey. Come on, you hold. Go, 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 go. Go! Where's a fucking snapper? I need two snapper on that table. Ready or not? Coming with it, Jeff. Believe that. I'll do that. You don't want to send these, do you? They can go with these. They just go in the window. Yeah. Andy. Can we go with these? Come here. Two seconds, please. Chef. What the fuck is going on there? This one's more cooked than that one, Chef. Come here, you a minute. Come here, come here. Just, 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 just 30 seconds. Out of the way of everybody. I need two snap from our table. Ready or not? There. It's relaunch night, and the pressure is starting to get to Andy. Come on, give me that fucking thing. They can go with these. They just go in the window. Old habits are returning, and the food preparation is suffering. Andy, what the fuck is going on there? This one's more cooked than that one, Chef. Come here, you a minute. Just, 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 uh, just 30 seconds. Out of the way of everybody. Yeah. You can't just send shit. Why now do we do this? Sorry, Chef, I didn't mean to do what? Why do you have to cook every fucking order? We're just about to serve two plates of shit. One mushy, fucking useless piece of fucking crap bit of fish, and one cooked to fuck. Why are you looking away? Talk to me. Chef, I didn't quite catch it. There's no excuse, Chef. You were running around doing everything. I don't get it. Where's the standards? You're right. I admit that. You come in here, big eye opener. Gordon Ramsay's a mean, nasty son of a bitch. It's a lesson in tough love. It's a wake-up call. Just that I didn't see it right till the very end. 
can't come this far now and flake at the end, huh? You know what? No, because this has to go, and I spoke no, to them already. No, it doesn't have to go. Oh. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm dreadfully sorry. He works his ass off all night. You couldn't like a star, and then look, we come to this. You've got more proudness in you than that. You got two snappers in the oven there, right? Yeah, that's it. There you go. Open up a door to him and taint him, yeah? Yes, yeah. You know what you could do would be nice? If you put the spinach on for me, and if they're on, all I've got to do is put them in the window that way. Let's go. This time, Gordon has clearly gotten through to Andy. He's on top of the kitchen again, and food is getting to the dining room quickly. Snapper? Very good. Very good. That's excellent. Snapper's delicious. They did a really good job. Gordon Ramsay is very insightful. He knows Andy can cook. He knows exactly what Andy needed. He saw the rut that Andy was in. It's been a dream come true. Thank you very much. OK. <laughs> Customers, that's it. Can we break down? Yeah. Yeah. After a successful relaunch night in a restaurant full of VIPs, Chef Ramsay wants to have one last word with the owners. Here's the good news about tonight. The relaunch was a success. Absolute success. Not one plate came back. That is incredible. You seriously can cook. But, Andy, here's my confession to you. There's been many times this week that you frustrated the hell out of me. You know that, right? Hold on. And honestly, I finally saw the man I've been dying to see. You cope brilliantly well. You're a different man. You just got on with it, delegated, and pushed them. I don't say a lot, and I don't smile a lot, but I, I'm a thinker. But I appreciate it. I really do. Without you, it wasn't no. possible. We appreciate it. I was real down in the dumps. I mean, ready to get the hell out of here. But with Gordon Ramsay being here this week, it's made me think we can make a better life and a better business here. I just can't wait to get into this new restaurant that we have. What a long way we have come this week. Yeah. Take care of that stubborn mule. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well done. Good job. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Up until tonight's dinner service, I really didn't know if Andy could make this work, and honestly, I'm still not convinced. He's got everything here to make this place a huge success. I just hope that his own stubbornness doesn't get in his way. Unbelievable. In the months that followed, Andy and Ellen continued to embrace Chef Ramsay's changes. Another one, another fillet. Snap a fillet risotto away. Le Bistro's food is light and fresh, and customers are thrilled. It's delicious. Okay, well, I will let the chef know. Thank you very well, thank much. Thank you very much. And there is no better indication of that Hello. than Le Bistro's <laughs> repeat business. I think Gordon Ramsay saw that I was just doing everything and doing too much, and it was holding me back. I'm really hoping to progress and move on and get bigger and better. Gordon Ramsay is welcome here anytime. Here's to Le Bistro and new beginnings. Thank you.